Pepsi-Cola. P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Washington calling David Harding, Counterspy. Harding, Counterspy, calling Washington. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks, Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best, and twice as much, in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now to Counter Spy. <laughs> To all counter-spy field offices, territorial United States, this is David Harding at headquarters, Washington. Vivian Lawrence, notorious espionage agent, is still at large. She is known to have in her possession the secret formula for artificial mica. Her last known whereabouts, Crystal Railroad Crossing, 65 miles south of Philadelphia, where she eluded capture by faking an auto accident. For the sake of our national safety, Vivian Lawrence must be apprehended. your identification. My identification? I declare, you've got no we right. We have direct orders from Mr. Harding to investigate all female passengers on this train. Mr. Harding? Yes. I'm a United States counter spy. Oh, counter spy. Let... Well, now, let me see what I have in my handbag. You don't mind? I'd like to look in that bag myself. Well, I do declare. You act like you don't trust me. The bag, please. Oh, very well. Thank you. I think this driver's license will do. Mrs. Wilma Gordon, 6932 Northwest Peachtree Street, Atlanta, Georgia. And according to your ticket here, you're going to Atlanta. You're traveling alone, Mrs. Gordon? Yes. And now, if you'll be good enough to tell me why you violated my privacy... Your government is searching for Vivian Lawrence, an espionage agent. Miss Lawrence is clever at using disguises and assorted uh, accents. Accents? Well, I do declare. You think I'm that horrible woman? I really do declare. Such stupidity in our government. My senator shall hear about this just as I soon didn't as I... say you were Vivian Lawrence. I know you're not. Huh? You see, Mrs. Gordon... I'm Vivian Lawrence. What? As I said, Vivian Lawrence is capable of many disguises and accents. But why did you come here? What do you want with me? I need a compartment and a ticket, a means of escape. Mrs. Gordon, you and I are very similar in looks. I've decided we're going to change places. Come with me. No, I'll do no such thing. 
I'm going to call a porter and have you turned over to the police. I'm sure this will change your mind. A gun. Shall we go, Mrs. Gordon? I... If we meet anyone in the corridor here, you will laugh and talk as if we were old friends. Do you understand? Yes. The porter's coming. You better do exactly as I told you. That was a hilarious letter from Charles, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, so you meant it. <laughs> All right, you can stop now. Uh, please let me go. I won't say anything. I promise. Open the door. We're going out on the platform. All right. Stand here near the outside door. What are you going to do? This first. Now, you can have your handbag back. Take it. All right, now, Mrs. Gordon, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You're making a non-scheduled stop. You're going to make me get off this train? The way the counter spies will see it, Vivian Lawrence, in an attempt to escape, jumped off this train. No! No! Please, don't do this to me! Goodbye, Mrs. Gordon. I have to go! I need it. Dave, you've been here in communications all night. A little shut eye wouldn't do you any harm. Hmm. That's your taste mighty good, Peters. You weren't even listening to me. Oh, there's no sleep in me, really. I'm standing by till we hear something on Vivian Lawrence. What gets me, Dave, is where could that dame have disappeared to after she faked that auto accident at the railroad crossing? Oh, Mr. Harding, yeah? Agent Braden's on the wire from Bay City with an urgent call. I've switched it to your desk here. All right, Miss Evans, thank you. Harding, go ahead, Braden. I just got a call in the field office here from the local police, Mr. Harding. A woman answering Vivian Lawrence's description was found alongside the railroad tracks 20 miles south of here. She must have jumped from a train. The body's pretty much banged up. Peters and I'll be right down there by plane. Braden, are they sure it's Vivian Lawrence? Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Mr. Harding. They found a handbag nearby with papers in it. The papers are labeled Formula for Artificial Mica. Pushing that baggage truck or I'll fire right here. I ain't praying and dying just yet. Keep walking straight ahead to the station office. Believe me, lady, you didn't stake out a likely place for a holdout. Not much here in Galesport in the way of pickings. I think you're mistaken. I think Galesport has everything I want. Just about everything. Back the blanket, Wilson. Well, Mr. Harding, here's the body, just as the local police found it. Mm -hmm. From the looks of it, Braden, I'd say she jumped from a train when it was going at pretty high speed. Are you satisfied, Chief, that it's Vivian Lawrence? Those formula papers we found in her handbag should be the clincher. 
They certainly should, Braden. Mr. Harding. What'd you find out, Peter? I made the check with Washington by wire photo, Chief. And? We compared the handwriting on the formula with that of its murdered inventor. They're not the same. What? It's a trick. And I'm sure now that this corpse here is another one of Vivian Lawrence's tricks to keep us second-guessing. Braden, did you make a check on the trains passing this point? Yes, sir. It's obvious that the woman was on a southbound train. Yes, that's right. Well, what about the trains? Uh, the local medical examiner determined the time of death at 11 p.m. Now, the only southbound train that passed this point between 10 and midnight was the flyer, due to arrive in Atlanta at 6 this morning. 6? That's less than an hour from now. Yeah. Peters, get back to the car. Have a call radio relay to Craig in Atlanta. I want all passengers held on that train when it arrives there. No one allowed off until our agents have gone through it with a fine-tooth comb. Right, Mr. Now, Braden, what other stops does the flyer make between here and Atlanta? Uh, uh, just a one-minute mail stop at a small town called Galesport. Galesport. All right, Braden, get in touch with the station master there. Warning, just in case. Inside. Quicker. And, lady, if you're figuring I keep any money here in the Gale Sports Station office, you're mighty mistaken. I want only two things from you. The key to your car and information about the Olympian Carnival. Ah. Well, I reckon that ain't much, considering the trouble you've gone through. The key to my flivver is right here in the telegraph desk. Now, about the Olympian Carnival. I hear it's scheduled to open near here tomorrow night. Uh, that's right. The ballpark between here and Ferndale, out on the turnpike. Ah, telegraph message coming in this time of the night. I want to know what that message is. Uh, okay, lady. Attention, station master. Countess spies warn you. Be on alert for Vivian Lawrence, espionage agent at large. Say, keep on. Uh, a possibility she may have gotten off flyer at your shop. Report any information immediately to Bay City Counter Spy Field Office. Yeah. And that's all, Miss Lawrence. So you're that dirty spy the government's looking for, eh? I read all about you in the town. And don't try any tricks. I happen to know the Morse code. Get at that telegraph key. You're sending an answer to that message. Sit down. Woman, 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 if you didn't have that gun, young lady, I'd beat the feathers and tarnation out of you. But I do have the gun. And you'll telegraph exactly what I tell you. Now begin. Woman answering description of Vivian Lawrence appeared at station right after flyer made mail stop. Woman answering description of Vivian Lawrence appeared at station right after flyer made mail stop. She asked for information on trains going north to New York. She asked about trains going north to New York. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Keep tapping that key. She seemed desperate. She seemed desperate. Well, that all? That's all. Except for this. Mr. Harding, what is it, Peter? The station master here in Bay City just called. Huh? A 
few minutes ago, we got a telegraph message from the Galesport station master saying that Vivian Lawrence was there. Oh. She asked about trains going back towards New York, but a funny thing happened. What do you mean? Right after the first message from Galesport came in, a second followed. It said, disregard previous message. Find Vivian Lawrence at... Then it stopped with the letters O-L-Y-M-P. O-L-Y-M-P. Yes. They've been trying to contact the Galesport station, Dave, but so far no answer. I told them to keep trying. Well, come on, Peters. We're not going to wait. We'll get our answer direct at the Galesport station. <laughs> There's our answer. Shot in the back twice. Peters, it must have taken superhuman courage for him to prop himself against the telegraph desk and tap out that second message. Well, anyway, at least we know now that she forced the old man to send the first message. We know now it was another trick to sidetrack us. Find Vivian Lawrence at Olymp. He had only just enough time to finish the message. Well, Peters, we're going to finish that message for him. Contact Central Analysis in Washington. I want the name of every city, town, and hamlet in this country whose name begins with the letters O-L-Y-M-P. Have them radio the list of us here immediately. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Olympian Carnival Science Show presents Hakeem... The Cobra. Notice, friends, how this most vicious, this most venomous of all reptiles, the deadly cobra, rises from his basket and weaves and dances to the weird strains of Hakim's flute. If Hakim was to stop playing before the snake winds down into his basket and the lid is closed, this cobra would strike, injecting the unfortunate victim with the most fatal of all poisons. Now see how the serpent obeys his musical master, friends, winding himself down into his basket. And now the cobra is safely under cover. Don't go away, friends. Hakim has for sale a valuable good luck cobra ring made by the natives of northern India. My good luck cobra ring, ladies and gentlemen. It is only 25 cents. It is sure to give you a lifetime of good fortune and happiness. I'll have one of those rings, please. Here you are, madame. Hakim, meet me at the Ferris wheel in ten minutes. I thought it was you, Vivian, but your disguise, it almost fooled me. How did you get here? What are you Never doing? Never mind the questions. The Ferris wheel in ten minutes. Presented by delicious Pepsi-Cola. Have you heard about those tests by that famous laboratory? Have you heard the latest news in the Pepsi-Cola story? Yes, there's big news about Pepsi. The cola you've always known was most delicious. The cola you've always known was best value is now shown to be the cola of proven highest quality. That's right. The U.S. Testing Company Incorporated reports you get more quick food energy... More quick food energy, ounce for ounce, in delicious Pepsi-Cola than any other nationally known leading cola drink. Yes, your Pepsi is really tops. Taste the tops, is the tops, and gives the most. So go ahead, enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. Insist on it wherever you may be. When you stop at the fountain, make sure you say, Pepsi, please. When you stop at a stand, make sure you say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big 12-ounce bottles. Pepsi's six bottles serve 12 refreshing glassfuls, twice as much. So save money and get the best. Come on, sing the Pepsi song with us. That's a cola, it's a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot, twice as much and better too. Pepsi Cola, here's a drink for you. Delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola, delicious Pepsi Cola. And now, back to Counter Spy. I've already bought the tickets to the Ferris wheel, Hakeem. Let's get in. I just test them. Just now, it's the safest place for you and me to talk. 
Why did you come here, Vivian? Naturally, you read about me in the papers. You stole the formula for artificial mica. And I read about you in the papers, Hakim. Me? I haven't done anything. I happened to pick up a paper on the train which advertised that the Olympian Carnival was playing this district. I saw your name as one of the stellar attractions, so naturally, for old time's sake, I thought... Vivian, I cannot help you. I'm through with all that. Now, really, Hakim... I am Vivian. I have changed. America has been good to me. Hakim, you're not making sense. Since I've changed my ways in the past ten years, I've found out what sense really is, Vivian. Money is the only thing that makes sense. No, Vivian. See all those people down there. Peace of mind and a feeling of trust and belonging to a great and good country like theirs is more than even money can buy. Oh, that's a good one. You in that cheap tent show talking that way, taking suckers for measly quarter ring. If you believe that a ring will bring luck, then perhaps it may. This foolish talk is just a waste of valuable time. I'll be brief and to the point, Hakim. I need a place to hide out temporarily. I'm sorry, Vivian, I cannot... A traveling carnival would be the last place the counter spies would look for me. Vivian, it's no use. No? I'm sorry. You said that before. It still makes no impression on me. But I'm sure this gun makes quite an impression on you. Vivian. I would say it's about a 50-foot drop from here to the ground. You... You wouldn't do that? Why not? Killing is nothing to me, Hakim. You don't hide me there. If you don't do exactly as I ask, I assure you those rings of yours will bring you nothing but the very worst of luck. Peters, Braden. Mr. Harding just went into a diner across the street to grab a bite. Anything special? No, Peters. Just reporting to the chief that his instructions have been carried out. The special alert has been sent to all cities, towns, and villages whose names begin with the letters O-L-Y-M-P. Okay, I'll tell him. We're standing by here to relay anything to Mr. Harding as soon as it comes in. Check, Braden. Get it started, Peters. Dave, I thought you were so hungry. I had a sudden change of appetite. Head straight out this street. You hit the turnpike. What's this all about? Vivian Lawrence, maybe. What? I happened to pick up the local paper back at the diner. In it, I saw an item announcing the opening tonight of a carnival on the turnpike between here and Ferndale. A carnival? The Olympian Carnival. Olympian? O-L-Y-M-P. Could be, Chief. It very well could, Peter. Open her up wide. Hakim, do you have to keep that basket in this tent? Why, Vivian? You don't have to be afraid of my cobra as long as he is in his basket. Snakes disgust me. Well, he won't bother you for a while. Just a moment. Yes. Where do you think you're going? It's time for my next performance. You're sure about that? You don't trust me? What do you think? But, Vivian, you cannot afford to keep me here under watch. If I don't appear at the show tent, they'll come here to see what is wrong. I know that. But just remember, Hakim, I expect you to go directly to the show tent and return here without any stop. Is that understood? Understood, Vivian. Midway, Dave. No sign of Vivian Lawrence. I've had no luck either, Peter. We're not leaving these carnival grounds. And... Look, what is it, Chief? Look over there, the sideshow tent. That man walking toward the entrance with the wicker basket in his hand. Holy smoke, Dave. Hakeem. Yes, our old friend Hakeem, the snake charmer. Wasn't he once tied up with Vivian Lawrence? Yes, back in 1938. But according to our checkups, he's supposed to have changed his way of living. Could be he's changing back again to his old way. That's always possible, but I was almost sure Hakeem was sticking to the straight and narrow. Hey, better duck behind the stand here. I think he's seen us. Right. A 
Maybe I was mistaken. He's walking into the fine show tent. All right, Peters, we can get started now. What are we going to do, Dad? Find out if Hakeem has really changed his ways again. What took you so long, Hakeem? The then... You've got to get away from here. I told you I'm staying. But he's here at the carnival. He? Who are you talking about? David Harding. Hard... I saw him as I entered the side show tent. I didn't want to arouse suspicion, so I went through with my performance. Put that snake basket down, Hakeem. Put it down. I... I don't understand. You understand this gun, don't you? Now do as I told you. And don't move from that spot. I want you to stand right under the light where I can see that sly face of yours. But what... what is wrong? You wanted to get rid of me. You tried to protect yourself. You called Harding. You told him I was hiding here. No, Vivian, no. I just happened to see him on the midway. I should have known you'd try something like this. But you're not getting away with it. You're going to die. I wouldn't move if I were you, Vivian. The snake... Get out! I let the lid off the basket before, as a precaution. The slightest move from you, Vivian, and he'll strike. Hakeem, please. See how he watches you, Vivian, waiting for you to make a single motion. Please, Hakeem, get him back. You can do it. Yes, all I have to do is play my flute. Well, then play before... Knowing that you plan to kill me with that gun. I won't, Hakeem. I promise I won't if only you... <laughs> A promise from you. What? Be careful, Vivian. You mustn't budge. Hockey, listen to me. Not the slightest move or he'll strike. Listen to me, please. I'll share the profits from the formula with you, Hakeem. You're me. not one to be trusted, Vivian. You can trust me now. You can. How do I know you even have the formula? For all I know... I do you have might... the formula, Hakeem. Right here in my coat pocket, please. Stand where you are, Miss Lawrence. It would be just as easy to kill another snake. Drop that gun. I'll get it, Chief. You heard everything, Mr. Harding? Yes, Hakeem. We waited until we were sure she had the formula papers with her. Thanks for all your help. I was glad to prove to you, Mr. Harding, that I'm really on the right side. And I was right. You did call the counter spy. I would have, Vivian, but they came to me first. Sorry I had to kill your cobra, Hakeem. We wanted to make sure of taking this woman alive. Oh, you didn't have to worry about that cobra, Mr. Peters. His fangs were removed years ago. Removed? Then he wouldn't... That's have... right, Vivian. All your fears were for nothing. Yes, Miss Lawrence, you were tricked by a toothless cobra. But we have laws in this country especially designed for people like you. Laws with very healthy, strong teeth in them. takes care of Vivian Lawrence. Now let's take care of the refreshments. Bring on those big, big Pepsis and have delicious Pepsi Cola all around. Mmm, tastes good. You just can't match Pepsi's fresh, tangy flavor. And there's plenty for two of you in Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle. Get Pepsi by the carton. It's six bottles, but 12 drinks. So save all that money. And enjoy that extra zing and bounce delicious Pepsi gives you. Remember, Pepsi's proven highest quality. Yet it gives you twice as much. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi Cola is a drink for you. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Delicious Pepsi Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Tuesday for the exciting case of a hijacked country. Years ago, it took a well-equipped army and an aroused population to carry out a revolution. But in modern times, a few determined men can seize a country by the throat, and not always for the purpose of revolution. For well, the amazing facts of the greatest hijack in history... Listen on Tuesday to The Case of a Hijacked Country on Counter Spy. Tonight, 
tonight's counter-spy program originated in New York, was directed by Mark B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counter-Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola.